This is a Norton Model 18, 1928-29, overhead valve with push rod tubes obviously. This bike was owned by Ed Hewitt, the same guy who owned the AJS. He had this later than the AJS. Uh, Binzi was using the AJS for uh, racing, hill climbs, grass track. He got this bike because of its low saddle height and he was only five foot four. He still had to get on the side of a curbstone to get on the saddle. And he used to get somebody else to kick it over just because he didn't have a long enough leg to kick the thing over. So he used to get somebody else to start it, get on a curbstone where he could get on the saddle. And so that's a little bit of history. But he had it in the 60s, coming up into the 70s. This was his road going bike. This was also my 65th birthday present to myself. I got it up in the loft, I never got it down again, so it didn't really work out as a very good birthday present. It's very, very long, it's very difficult to get up in the loft, and I just hope that it won't cause any problems getting it down, but I'm not sure it came up like it was climbing Ben Nevis. Obviously, got to go down the opposite way, so it's pretty umpy, pretty difficult. Typical Norton of the period, I don't know if it ever had a, a smaller tank but this is what we know is a Norton saddle tank of 1928. It's got um, dance knee grips. The speed men of the day used to have these because they could put their knees into them. They're molded to take your knees and it don't let your knees go forward. So that's uh, it looks a racy object but having said that this is a road going bike of the 28s. There was oh, there was uh, overhead cam bikes at that time. Uh, I don't know about faster, but far more expensive today. So, um, as I say, this is a typical bike of 1928 and Norton. Um, quite big brakes. I've never seen, heard it going, because when I went and bought it, the guy had already sprained his ankle kicking it over. So, that wasn't a very good omen, and I didn't want to kick it over because I had 150 miles to travel. So there we go. So I haven't never seen it going. Um, it once now it's been it's been off the road now to my knowledge. I've had it five or six years. It possibly was off the road three or four years before that. So it's been off the road ten years. It's got to be made road worthy again. The cables want oiling. The, the steering wants greasing. Everything wants checking out. Oil wants checking. Um, Every single thing wants to be checked out to make sure that it's safe to go on the road again. Well, I'm not an expert on Norton motorcycles. It, it just appealed to me and I bought it. There is a book downstairs that covers it in greater depth. And some of the things I tell you could easily be qu not quite correct. So please don't take them as gospel truth. This engine, this Model 18 engine, was in production before 1928 and it went on even with some modifications to go into the ES2 in 1950s on the Norton. So it's an engine that's been around a long while. But having said that, uh, I point now to the oil tank. It's got a flip up top, a uh, half a gallon oil tank. The system comes down here with a tap on, mustn't ever forget not to turn the tap on, otherwise when you start the bike up you will have one awful um, problem. So there's a tap in the line, make sure you turn the tap on and also make sure you turn it off, but very important that you turn it on. This bike was originally hand changed. The hand change mechanism fits on here and it doesn't fit on the tank, not on like a 25 AJS where you have a gate, they call it a gear change mechanism on the tank. You have a gate in which you can go one, two, three. You This particular uh, hand change me mechanism falls into the grooves on this ratchet here. Consequently, you would fill for one, fill for two and fill for three. Tint a four speed box, to my knowledge, I think you'll find it's a three speed box. And having said that, but lots of chaps at that time 
went to this mechanism which looks antiquated but it does work they tell me so this is a foot change mechanism you just fill with your toe get it into you have to be fair if it's a 500 motor you don't have to change down to go up a small hill this thing will just go up the hill without changing down so once you're underway top gear possibly be you'll be up into top gear at 25 mile an hour and the thing would be pulling itself from then on you don't have to as you do with a small bike keep on changing up and down this bike hasn't got lights but i think this would make a useful addition to the bike when i got this bike i immediately looked for a headlamp and this is what i found a gas this is a acetylene headlamp it's got no provision here at all for electric light but in the forks it's two lug holes they're not for cables to run through, they're to have the lighting brackets, the proper lighting brackets to go into there and to connect on to either side of the headlight. I think that this particular light would look quite nice on the front. Should obviously have a backlight as well and a gas generator, but I think that would finish that bike off. If you have a look at that, I don't know what you think about it on shop, but I think it would look quite nice. On the front is girder forks, which is correct for the period because Norton's didn't introduce uh, telescopic forks not till 19, I think it was 1948 they put it on the ES2, which was a bike after this. So girder forks, uh, these are these nuts or, or bolts are the means of adjusting up the girder forks. Uh, brakes are seven or eight inches needed for a bike of this weight and for a bike that can move along fairly quickly so back in front you've got I think they call them web brakes but I'm not sure on that so um, but they're seven or eight inches and they tell me they're quite a good brake for the time so that's the front at the back there's no suspension at all but we're on wired edge tires here which is totally different to beaded edge we don't have these at 50 pounds per square inch possibly they would be something like 26 or 28 at the back and 24 in the front. I'm not sure about that. Please check to recommended tyre pressures. You have a sprung saddle and that takes that gets rid of a lot of road shocks. Here you see the springs on the saddle. It's a real it's a real sprung saddle and that and also don't ride through potholes, ride round them. Underneath here you would see holes in the frame that would be for sidecar mounting, lugs for mounting a sidecar because a 500 bike in the day would have had this is a lug here and this is a lug here already built into the frame to mount a sidecar on. On bikes of this nature, on any vintage bike, uh, you couldn't turn it over, you could stand on the kickstart and you couldn't turn the engine over that's because there's good compression there and you just can't turn it over You've got to have some means of easing that compression now how they've eased the compression in on the 19 before 28 1925 was just the same they always had a valve lifter what that done is a, a lever on the handlebars you pull in the lever it operates a cam on the it on the exhaust valve i'll show you it working on the engine now and then you can see where the lever is on the on the handlebars after I am now pulling on the lever that operates the cam breaks the exhaust valve off of its seating consequently no compression then you can kick the engine over when you kick the engine over you drop the lever just like that you drop the lever because you want compression to start it you won't start it unless you so when the engine's turning like that you drop the lever comes on to compression hopefully good spark carburation right it'll start up this is the exhaust valve lever okay you pull that lever in like that what that does that operates on the cam of the exhaust valve it holds the valve up soon as you're up over the top and that's over the compression drop the lever by then the engine will be turning over on the kick starter hopefully it'll start up if it doesn't you either want a good mechanic or decide not to take the bike out for the day 
originally this particular bike would have had inverted levers what we call inverted levers that the lever would have come out the handlebar and come round the front here I'm sure that I'm right in that statement but having said that they've been fitted with period levers of the time which are basically right certainly these levers are right they're nickel plated these are an after bought they're in chrome yeah chrome was coming in then but this is nickel but one would be advanced and retired and one would be air so we would have I think this is the I think this is the advance and retard and I think this is the air. On some bikes of 1928 they had a petrol tank and an oil tank combined. Now Norton's didn't have that. Norton's had a tank as you can see a big tank three to four gallons of petrol it's just a tank full of fuel but they are obviously they had a half a gallon oil tank mounted down here on the frame. It's got a mechanical pump which is Pilgrim so the Pilgrim pump would have taken care of this engine running it at any kind of speed but also here as you see on some other bikes where they add the plunger the plunger part upon the tank they have here built in the plunger if you want extra oil to go into the motor when you're going quick or if you were pulling a sidecar in, in in a hurry but so this plunger here is for that but it's obviously haven't been used in possibly in this boat's lifetime at all because it's got a good oil pump but if that oil pump packed up and this was connected up already you could still run this bike home by using the plunger one square every five to seven mile so it's a secondary uh, a secondary safety measure on the oil tank uh, and as I say this is 1928 and this is how they done it carburetor moved round there a bit and the guy could press his hand on the plunger and pump the oil in uh, so um, judging by where the carburetor is at the moment this is obviously not how it would have been set up originally correct? no that would have been round there thing is when it goes round there it gets near the mag but you really that oil pump would have been set up in here but this is where they set it because you've got your leg in there see what I mean your legs there you have to be able to get your hand down in there to pump it it's pretty economical on petrol it does 80 or 90 miles to the gallon and I suppose the top speed on this particular bike would be 75 you might get 80 I'm not sure I certainly have never rode it so I'm not talking about something that uh, in that nature that I, I wouldn't be sure about but it should obviously it's a big motor 500 cc's um, they were known for slogging powers because they made the international which was quicker but this is this I expect this bike in its day would have done 80 but whether it whether it do 80 now or not I can't tell you it's possibly a bike that would like to slog at 55 or 60 miles an hour lots of people made them quick lots of people enjoy them just to go for a vintage run on them.